All right, let me let me know if you're not able to see the PowerPoint slides. Now, previously, we stopped at these slides. OK, we stopped at this uh, Stephen matrix for BIM that we arrive at K equal to E I L cube. And this one is a standard form. So you have 12, 6 L minus 12, 6 L and so on. OK, this is a standard format. And for BIM, you are having uh, F equal to KD. So your F sites for BIM, you will be seeing force and moment. OK, force and moment, F1, Y, M. F2, Y, M2, your K, your D is uh, vertical displacement or we call it transverse displacement. V1, rotation angle 1 and 4.2. So uh, always remember to write your answer, your displacement in set. Huh? Means this one is, these two will be your point 0.1, these two will be for point 0.2. Same with your force and moment also. Okay. All right. Let's look at uh, uh, one example. So if you look at the screen here, you're having a beam structure that is having a moment, a twisting moment at point number two. So you're having uh, a beam structure that is having point one and point, uh, point one, point two, point three. You have three point. Okay, you have three point. And the reference axis will be at the center of the beam. So you have Y and X here. The length will be a bit different. The length will be 0.1 to 0.2 is L, 0.2 to 0.3 is L. So the total length for this beam will be 2L. All right. There will be a focus or external loading or external force of 1000 Newton at point two, there will be a moment at point number two, or there will be a torque of 1000 Newton meter at point two. All right. Now, uh, Ashmal, you do you still remember the direction of our moment? In this case, if you look at the screen here, this is anti clockwise. So this one label as positive or negative? Positive. Positive, huh? Right. So let's take note. Uh, for this chapter, moment anticlockwise positive, rotation angle also positive when it's anticlockwise, follow the moment direction. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, Chia, what is the sign that you use for this external force? Is it positive or negative? This 1000 meter. Negative. Why? Why negative? Because the, the wine sign is going out. Uh, yeah, correct. So if you look at this diagram, uh, Sue, this question is for you. If you look at point one here, what is your displacement? What do you think? If you're solving beam. Huh? Okay, I flipped the previous slides for you. You're solving beam. I'm asking about the displacement here. Okay, the displacement here. So your displacement, you're looking at V, vertical, and rotation for beam or pi. So Sue, I'm asking you this question. If you look at the diagram for point one, what do you think is your vertical displacement and angle of rotation for point one? What do you think? What is the value for vertical displacement for point one? Or is the angle rotation for point one? If you look at this diagram, uh, zero. Zero, huh? Both zero, huh? Yes. Okay. Fixed. Yes, correct. Okay. So these are the the general idea when you solve question this one in test or exam. When you look at the the point, if the point is at the wall, straight away write this the displacement that happened at that. Uh, point okay v10 uh, theta or pi 10 this two marking here will cost you two to three marks okay by writing this in your answer okay all right uh ei let's say we assume to be constant 
meaning uh, in this case, uh, we will use any value of EI as long as the equation is there, meaning we will use this F equal to M, uh, F equal to KD will be the same means uh, E and I we will just put outside there because it's a constant value uh, for the beep structure. So we, if, if you are given the E and I value later on, then we just substitute back in here. So this example, we will use a general uh, equation to solve it. So for element one, if you can see the circle, element one is connecting point one and point two, element two connecting point two and point three. So we will repeat writing the stiffness matrix of K. So again, you see a small K here, it means element. This one is element one. Okay. E I L cube and this one is the standard form. Okay, 12, 6 L minus 12, 6 L. Okay. So you write write this. All right. Now Brian, I'm going to ask you some uh, notation. Notation means your pencil marking uh, when you want to do superimpose later on, uh, meaning your parking ticket number. For element one, all right, you have four level or four column. Okay, Brian, this question for you. Huh? What what should you put? What should you write on top of all this number or by the side of this number? What do you think? Why who? If yeah, what, what what should you put here, 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 or here? Yeah, here. Yeah. You have your general equation F equal to KD. And we are talking about uh, we're talking about beam. Your K is here. Your D is here. Just now I asked a question of I asked Sue one question. Link the answer of Sue about displacement here with all these question marks. For element one, what do you see? Um, what should you write here? U one. U one. Are you saying U one? No, 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 not you want, not you want. Do you want me to repeat the same same pages no, no. of slides to the whole class? No, 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 no. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting. Do you seeing what 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 is I showing you on the screen here? It's your F, K, D. What should you write here? With your pencil, what is all this green color that you should write? So I'm, I'm forgetting the, the units, but then it's supposed to have like uh, the, the what is your D? What is your D? What is your like displacement? Is what is your displacement? What are the displacement you have in the beam structure? Of the, the V1. Okay. 
V1. Then the, the angle one. V1. V, V2. And V2. So, mm. so what, what should you put here? If you're referring to your D. So that should be V1. V1. Okay, V1. This one. This one. Uh, this V2. V2? Oh, angle, angle, angle one. No, sorry, sir, sir. Angle one. Angle this is one set, right? Uh, one set. One. Second set. Angle one. This one? That one is uh, V2. 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 This one? That is for angle. Angle. Angle two. Okay, this one? The side one. That's V1, sir. Okay, V1. This one? Angle. Angle, angle one. Angle one. V, two. Angle two. Now you clear the the ticket number that you should you should know how to write now. Actually, it's just ma matching your D, your displacement in the equation. Okay, so the first two row is point one. This one is the second row. Any, any, anyone you have question about how to write or the green color label? Anyone you still not clear? Try to think back because your test is coming Thursday. And that con don't confuse the spring and the other chapter. But basically the step is still the same. The approach is still the same. Okay. Now, Brian, you still need to solve this question. What is this one? What, what should you write at the top of the K there? By looking at this, this diagram. So we're looking at element one. So by using pencil, what should you write here on the top to issue the parking ticket? V1, sir. V1, this one? Angle one. Angle one, this one? V2. V2, this one? Angle two. So here also same, huh? you repeat the same. And until you reach this one. Okay. Angle one, three, two. All right. So make sure you, you understand what is this meaning. Huh? It's a parking ticket number because later you want to superimpose them. You want to park them in a the very big parking complex. So element two will be the same. K2. EIL3 and the formula inside the matrix still same, only the parking ticket issue on top and the right of the uh, matrix will be different. So let's test whether you understand or not. Huh? Uh, Sue, are you there, Sue? Yes. What should you write here? What is this? Uh. Uh. V1, a V2, V2, angle two, angle two, V3, angle three. Correct. Okay, good. So under, understand. All right. So the rest, if you don't understand, ask me now. If you don't understand why this one V2, this one angle two, this one V3, this one uh, angle three. Okay. Once you understand this one, you repeat the same skill that you learned in uh, chapter two and even chapter three how to park the number in the very big complex here. Okay, so as you can see from these two metrics, what is the size of when you combine these two? What is the size of the metrics that you can expect? Uh, Ashma, can you try to answer? What is the capital K matrix when you combine? What is the size of this one? Yeah, times three. three times three, yeah? Uh, no, sorry, not three, six times six. 
Ashma, you're answering six times six just now, right? Yeah, I've got, I've got six. Uh, yeah. You got three points. Because you yeah, have three okay. points. Huh? So you will have V1, angle 1, until V3. V3, angle 3, and here V2, angle 2. Same with this one. So you have 6 times 6. So you need to understand the ticket the ticket number that you issue for individual, uh, 1 and 2. Then you combine these two into a very big complex. Okay. So I think uh, all of you are expert already in uh, marking all these numbers. So I'm going to go for, okay, this one just a reference. Huh? Right. So we have these two metrics, then we combine into a very big matrix, like what you see on your screen. Okay, it will be a very big matrix. Okay, so this one, again, just a reminder, this is small k, small k, so when you write in a uh, capital K, this whole thing uh, here to here is a very big K. This is a capital K. Uh. The green box here is capital K. So after you combine, you write in terms of F, capital F equal KD. Okay, so displacement, you can see you have three points, you have six parameter there. V1, rotation 1, V2, rotation 2, V3, rotation 3. And then on the left, you have force moment, force moment, force moment. Three set. Okay, because each point gives you two displacement. Okay, and this is just a presentation for you so that I, you, by looking at the screen here, you know that uh, this, this one actually is a combination of uh, when you import the number from these two metrics, you will see 12 times 12, this one minus 6L plus 6L, and so on. So important to show these steps in your test or final exam. Huh? So when you combine, make sure you write these metrics again so that uh, you can double check your answer. You can cross check your answer before you submit your answer. Okay, uh, write these steps and then you do one more set for the total one, for the re, uh, you rearrange the, the matrix again. For example, this section, when you combine minus 6L plus 6L, you get zero for this one. Okay. Any question for this blue color matrix? Anyone you don't understand how to get this one? You don't know how to park the number. Anyone? Good, huh? All right. So I assume all of you know, huh? Brian, you understand, huh? How to park the number? So, so I understand the, the parking image. Mm -hmm. So what, what is your question? Or any, any doubt that you need to clear? The, the, uh, I just wanted to give that a clarification on. Mm. Well, what do you need to clarify, or what you need to, what you want to ask me? The generation of the figures of uh, twelve six L. You mean this one? Yes. You don't understand why you get this one. Yes, I'm a little bit confused. What is this parking ticket about? Again, I ask you, what, what should you write with your pencil above this one? Okay, yeah, but yeah, that's... Uh... What should you write? All this X number, do you understand? Yes, sir. Ah. So what is this parking ticket number that you should issue? This one is uh, what? V... V1? This one is V1, right? This yes. number is V1, V1. So, these two metrics, which one is V1, V1? This one, right? Yes. Yeah, this one is V1. V1, V1, 12. Huh? Okay. 
Why this one zero? Because you don't have number for this one. For example, this one is V3, V1. How you find V3, V1 here? There's no V3, V1. So zero. This one zero. Yeah, that, that's, that's why I was confused. Do you yeah. understand now? Do you see it now? Yes, sir. Okay. Anyone anyone else you don't know why uh, why suddenly this one is 12 past 12? You don't understand. You cannot see it. Why this one 12 past 12? Chia, can you explain how you get 12 times 12 here? How you get the first 12? How you get 12, first 12? Tia, are you there? Yeah. What is the parking ticket for the first 12? V2, V2. V2, V2. This is V2. So first one is V2, V2. If you refer to, you try to look in, under here. So V2. V2, 12. Here, do you have V2, V2? You don't have, right? Okay, V2, oh, you have. Uh, huh? So this one also have. The second one is, the first 12 is for element 1. You extract from here. Here, V2. The first 12 is element 1. Second is element 2. Because element 2 also have 12. Chia, do you see it? Yes. Okay. All right. I, I have one more. I test one more. Uh, Ashma, uh, this question for you. Can you explain why this one 4L plus 4L? What is this ticket number? Uh, it's because uh, yes. pi two, pi okay. two, pi two. This one also pi two. From so pi two, pi two. You look at the first one. Look for pi two, pi two will be this one. Okay, so you get the first one, element one. Then look for second one also. What is because this coordinate is pi two, pi two. So you need to look at this, refer to these two metrics and look for pi 2 and pi 2. So another pi 2 is 4L square here. So you park the same. Okay, Ashma, you understand, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Anyone, anyone else? You still not clear how to get all this number? You still don't clear hey, why this one zero? Okay, why this one is zero? If you cannot find the parking ticket inside one and two, put zero. For example, I explain one more time. Huh? This one, the parking ticket for this this slot here is V1 theta 3 or pi 3. This parking lot for this one. V1 pi 3. So you look for V1 pi 3. The first one, you don't have V1 pi 3. Maximum for point 0.1 is only pi 2. So there's no pi 3. So you look for element 2. Is there any V1 pi 3? There's no V1 there. So you cannot find V1 pi 3. So 0. Same with this one. Okay, and so on. Okay, we are clear with the combination superimposed. These two become capital K and then write F equal KD in this form. Okay, so in exam, this one two marks, this one two marks, capital K maybe two to four marks. You combine, superimpose, you get the capital K, you get two to four marks. 
you write F equal to KD, it will cost you two to four marks also. So minimum marks you get is eight marks. Thank two, you. two, two, two. Maximum you will get 12 marks. So you will, by having these slides or write your answer in K1, K2, uh, capital K, and F equal to KD, it will cost you eight to 12 marks. Almost half of the question you solve already because one question is 25 marks. Uh, so if you can understand these slides, you almost pass this module. You know how to superimpose, you know how to combine until you get F equal to KD, like what you see on the screen here, meaning you almost pass this module. <laughs> Yeah, so it's very easy to score as long as you know what we are doing. The step always the same. The the SOP I mean the the the, the steps we always use to solve this uh, chapter three, chapter two, even chapter four. You will always same. You always need to superimpose, and just solve the matrix problem. All right, now uh, the next one will be boundary condition. There will be one section in the question ask you to label the boundary condition. Boundary condition means you look at the site or any support there. So in this case, uh, I asked earlier, uh, I think Sue answering. Point one zero, V one zero, the pi one zero rotation angle zero here. Point three, point three can rotate. Now this is a pin structure, meaning it can rotate freely. It's a pin there. It can rotate freely means there is a displacement there. However, if the pin, it cannot move up, it cannot move down. So it fixed, it cannot move up and down. So your V3 is zero. So if you look at your F equal to KD equation, your V10, pi10, V30, you already uh, can reduce six times six to three times three uh, equation already, all right, or matrix, okay? Anyone, you don't understand the boundary condition of this tree? You don't understand why V10, rotation 10, V3, 0. Any of you, you don't understand why this one cannot move up? Because it's a pin, huh? it's a pin structure, a uh, pin, it's a pin constraint. But it can rotate, it can rotate, it's free to rotate because it's a pin there. Okay, we move on. Huh? So since you have the first one zero, you just use your uh, ruler. You just close, close the first row and first column. Then you look for uh, theta one or pi one or rotation angle one. You also close because it's zero. You close with, uh, I label with a different color so you can see what, what we are doing here. So you close the second and row, including the force over there, the moment. Then the third one. V3 zero, so you go to V3 and close it. So you are seeing F2, M2, M3. You are seeing this one. You seeing this one. You seeing this one. And you seeing this one. This one also. This one also. So basically, you are seeing three equation here. Okay. You're seeing three times three matrix. So after you close with uh, your ruler or with your pencil, you close all these things and then you extract. So in the in the exam, you can use your pencil to just lightly cross the all this number, or you can rewrite this this matrix and you use your pencil to cross it, and then you extract the remaining uh, numbers to a new uh, new new space in your answer. Okay, next we're going to extract this, this, the remaining number into a new matrix here. So F2Y, you write negative 10,000. I already, already asked uh, this question to uh, one of you. I think Sue answering, right? Uh, Su chia or answering. Chia, chia, yeah. So you should understand why negative uh, 1,000 there. And then M2 why there's a thousand m2 there 
and why is this positive? This one I think uh, Ashmal answering in the beginning. Why this one positive? Okay, and M3, you see M3? Why M3 zero? Huh? Why M3 zero? If you look at M3, it's a pin, right? And imagine you have a structure pin to this pawn. If this body free to move left or right, if this structure you pin to a point and this structure is free to move left and right, means it can rotate up and down, uh, means 300, uh, what, in this case, uh, 180 degree. Lah. Either it move to the left or move to the right or move, maybe move now. The, there's no there's no stopping or there's no resistance to this point. So moment at this point will be zero. For example, if I label this point as uh, point C, so moment at point C will be zero. Take note, huh? this is an important concept. If you don't understand this one in the exam, they will, you will keep stopping at this, uh, you will start at this point. Take note, uh, if there's a point of free to move, left or right, for example, if you look at point three, point three free to move left or right, it can rotate left or right freely. So there's no stopping, there's no resistance there. So the moment at point three will be zero. Okay, the same, the rest, you just copy what you see on the screen here. So you copy this one up to here, 24. This one, minus XL plus XL get zero. This one, 6L over here. You repeat the same for the remaining numbers. You just export them, put together. This one, V2. Same, rotation two, rotation three. After that, once you get this one, okay, before you move forward, anyone, you don't understand how to get this one. Brian, you understand? So if you can repeat for me, it's a moment. Do you understand how to get the top one. I don't well. Between four six. Do you understand all this colorful line here? Red color line, yellow line, and the blue color line. Yes, sir. Okay. What what is all this line mean? What is the procedure? Why do we cross this one? What for example? What why there's a red color line on the screen here? This one is to uh, eliminate out. Yeah. What? Why? On on what condition? What What is the bounding condition that allow us to like cross or use the red color line to cross the the numbers? What because contributes to the red line? Because the the question we we are we are support, we are going to. to to find. So we find out the rest. Uh, what is the value of V1? What is the value of V1? Brian? V1 equal to what? So V1, V1? you go to 12. I'm asking no, about the displacement here. What is the value of V1? What is oh. the transverse displacement? V1 number or value? Zero, sir. What is your, this is parking ticket, uh, V1, right? Mm. This is zero, right? Yes. Uh, we, we cross it because we just temporarily close it. It's not meaning that this whole thing is zero, but we just cross it to to help us to solve. Do you understand the yellow color line? Why we cross it? It's because what? It's because the angle is yeah, zero. This one zero. So we cross it. This one is zero. You understand the blue color line? 
while we cross the this blue line here. Why this there is a blue line at this location? So the horizontal one. Is, yeah, you see the blue. You see the blue color line here. Yes. Either the horizontal or vertical. Do you understand why why we can cross it? Yes, sir. Why? What is the value of V three? Of zero. Zero. What is the parking ticket of this? This row. What is the parking ticket for this row? What is the parking ticket that you write on top of this matrix? V3. V3. That's why there's a blue line. We can close this column and this row. So you only you only left out these remaining numbers. You just export them inside outside the in your answer sheet there. Do you see it now, Brian? When you export, remember there's a constant value, uh, EI over L3 outside there. Some students, they forget to, to export this one. This also I've seen uh, every semester, there will be one student. Forget to export. He know all these steps. You know, he know how to cross all these things. I see the student uh, did cross all these number, but when he export to a new line in his answer, he forget to export the EI over L3. Then the rest is wrong. Okay. Yeah. Solve the simultaneous. You're going to get the same. You're going to get these three. Okay. There are three equation here. In this case, the value of EI is not given, but normally they are constant value. So E will be given, I will be given, so you just substitute. L in the question will be given, so you just substitute the number L there. Then you solve for the remaining unknown. Okay. Any questions so far? For this question, then you get your V2 pi 2 and pi 3 or rotation angle 2 and 3. Then after that, you substitute back inside here because this one 0, this one 0, you get your V2, get your rotation 2, this one 0, get your rotation 3. You have a full set of F equal to KD. You get a full set. This one you get already. D you get. K is uh, all the constant value you get. You only need to solve for the left hand side. So left hand side you have F1Y, M1, M2, M3, and so on. Okay, you can solve by just substituting the number inside this matrix and you get F1Y. Any question before we move to the next example? No, huh? okay. Let's look at one more example. Huh? One more example. So by using the stiffness matrix method, direct stiffness method, I'm going to solve the problem as you see on the, on the screen here. So you have a cantilevered beam with a, a roller ball at point number two. So you have a force at the end of the structure here. Um, and assume that you have an EI constant. So of course in test or exam, e, the value of E and I will be given, a uh, length will be given. Okay. Support by a roller at the mid length and it built in the rigid end, this one. Okay, let's try to solve this question. Again, back to the question, I will go to Sue. Again, so what is the displacement you have for beam? Eh? We are looking at beam here. Beam F equal to KD or capital F, uh, F equal to KD. I'm asking you about the displacement now. What is the displacement for point three? So can you answer? Zero. Zero for what? 
voice uh, what 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 equal to zero? What equals you? I'm asking you the displacement here. For beam, what are the two displacement you are looking at? Mm. <coughs> uh, U1, U2. I'm asking you about this point. Do you understand what is... Oh, yeah. Did Just I, now you mentioned U1, U2? Okay. U... I'm asking you about this point. And then you are solving beam problem. I'm asking about the displacement. Do I need to explain these slides one more time? You want me to explain one one time these slides? Uh, do you understand no. this? Ah, do you understand what what is mean by these slides? I'm asking you about the this one, the D here. So for beam, what what for beam what uh for beam, if you look at one point, you have two point here. Each point will give you displacement. What are the displacement you have for each point if you're looking at beam problem? So, what is the displacement you have? Do you understand my question, Sue? So? What is the displacement for beam for one point? What are the displacement? If you write F equal to KD, small f. What is the displacement for point number two? If you have a beam. If you have a beam, what are the displacement you have? Point two. I'm asked about F equal KD. I'm asked about the displacement. By looking at the diagram, what 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 is your displacement? Uh, for the diagram is M two and angle two. I'm asking about displacement. I'm not asking about force. I'm asking you about displacement. F equal KD. I'm asked about displacement component. You don't understand the differences between displacement and force, is it? Force, do you, uh, Sue, do you, do you know how to differentiate the difference between displacement and force?
Sue, are you there? Um, F equal to KV. One is force, one is displacement. I'm asking about Okay, maybe I ask you the whole diagram. You have rotation one, M one, force one, vertical displacement one. You have force one Y, vertical V two, moment two, rotation two. Do you different? Do you know how to park all these number inside F equal to K D matrix? Which one should go where? Do you understand? So do you understand? Um, uh, yes. Ah. So tell me, tell me how you put the number. For the first is F1 Y and F2 Y. Force we put inside here. Okay, F1, F2. Then? Uh, the displacement is V1 angle 1, V2 angle 2. V1 angle 1, V2 angle 2. Then, what about this one? Oh. The, the moment where it should be. The moment is. Oh, is uh, moment one is under the F one Y. Okay. So you understand how to park this number, right? Uh, yes. Uh. My question just now. Okay. What is the displacement at point two? If you only focus on point two, what is the displacement that you can find in point two? Uh, V2 and angle two. Mm, V2 angle two. Now you understand. Uh, yes. Back to the question just now. Back to the question. Point three. What is the displacement for point three? V three V three and angle three. Mm. What is their value? Zero because fixed. Mm. This is what I want to ask you just now. Uh, okay. Okay. So. Okay, the next question I'm going to ask Ashma. Ashma, can you tell me the displacement at point two? What value that you confirm is zero? Uh, v2. V2. Zero. Zero. Because it cannot move, huh? but there is a value for rotation. Okay. All right. All right, let's solve this question. Standard, you call out the small k for element. You solve for element first. So you write for k1. You repeat lah, the same steps for element one. You repeat the same. Okay, you have the EI divided by L cube and the numbers. There's all these numbers. And you label accordingly. Okay, with your pencil and then you park the number. 
Okay, either the same, you have a 12, so on. It will be the same like this one, but for element one, this one is V1, rotation one, V2, rotation two. Same with this one, V1, rotation one, V2, rotation two. Repeat the same for K2, small k, which is this element. However, it will be different for A2, uh, for K2, you need to label differently. In this case, the first row will become V2, rotation 2, V3, rotation 3, and so on. This one also same. V2, rotation 2, V3, rotation 3. This one for K2. After that, once you have issuing all the parking ticket, you do the superimpose into a very big matrix where you get this one. Okay, so again in exam, you need to fill all this space. Huh? Symmetry means you will be the same as the opposite side. This is your mirror. Okay, just park here, for example, 6L and so on. Okay, you get the capital K. So you label with the pencil, the capital K, and the V1, V2, and so on. Okay. All right. So this is the element one, and I also box for you to show this is the element two. There's two box there. Then you combine all the number there. All right. Then once you solve for capital K, you write F equal to M, uh, F equal to KD. Like what I show you on the screen here. After you park all the number, you write F equal to KD. Okay. Then you solve. For example, V2 0, V3 0, rotation 3 0. So this one 0, uh, sorry. So for example, V2 0, V3 0, rotation 3 0. So use your pencil to close the matrix. Okay, I do the, the step for you. You see the blue line? I close this one because V2, 0. So which column I should close? Which one refer to V2? Brian, which, which column here? This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Which one? Okay, maybe I use a small alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F. Which column referring to V2? Brian? A, B, C, D, E, F. Which column refer to V2? Brian, are you there? Yes, sir. my phone are disconnected. Yeah. Which column referring to V2? A, B, C, D, E, F. C. C is V2, huh? Okay. So yeah. since V2 is zero, so you close, you close it with a line later. Okay. So you cross, you 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 just close the the column. Okay. Do the same for the rest. So you only left out this one, this one. Remember, there's a constant value outside matrix. Remember, uh, this what is one of the error done by student. So don't repeat your senior mistakes. Then you have the number here. You have a number here. You have this number. 
we have this number, this number. So you just extract the remaining to a new sheet of paper and you rewrite them in this case. Okay. So you export all the remaining numbers. And for example, F1Y. F1Y referring to the external force. Capital F is external force. So P. However, it's because it's going down, you get a positive sign, uh, sorry, negative sign for the P. Important, uh, positive negative sign. Okay, then for M1, M1, uh, M1, M1 here, because it's, it's uh, free to move. Uh, M2 here, also free to rotate. Okay, it's free to rotate at point one, it's free to rotate at point two, so zero, zero. Important you understand why this one zero. Huh? Sir. Hmm. I thought V2, V2 is, isn't this, isn't this free to move within the horizontal direction? Because it's just a roller on the ground. What is this value mean to you? What is M? What is M? What is M? So, so the moment. Moment. Moment means twisting angle, right? Mm. What is the direction of positive angle uh, rotation or moment? Clockwise or anticlockwise? Anticlockwise. 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 You look at point two. Does it free to roll like this? Point two here. Does it free to roll? No. Uh, we are talking about F component. Eh? Talk about F component. Moment here. Uh, sorry, moment two. Sorry, I'm I'm referring to the wrong, uh, wrong location as you asked. Just now you asked about point two. So point two free to roll, right? Yeah. Correct. Ah, so point two, zero, M two zero because row two. Ah, uh, point two is free to roll. M one also same. M one also free to rotate. There's no, there's no resistance here, not like M3. You understand the M meaning, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Ah, okay, so that's why you get zero here. Yeah, of course, it, it, point two, it can move to, it's also free to move left and right. But as long as there's a free to move, then it becomes zero. But uh, however, you are you are looking at beam again. You're looking at beam. There's no U there. For beam, there's no U. For spring, for chapter for chapter two and chapter three, or your coming test, there will be a U because spring have spring always follow x direction or y direction depending, but only one direction only. But for beam, there's no U. Huh? Beam, we look at Y direction only. Okay, anyone have question how you get this one? Anyone of you don't understand how you get this one? Clear? All right. Stop me. Huh? If you really don't understand, stop me. Don't keep quiet. Huh? Yeah. All right. Then you just solve for all the unknown because all this you can solve. L is a constant value, E constant value, I constant value, L constant value. You only left out three equations here. Okay, solve these three. You manage to find a displacement. Okay, you do the transverse. You do the transverse uh, displacement. Uh, you do the 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 inverse matrix. You manage to find v1. You get the negative sign. We agree with the the force because if you press or point one, point one you go down. So you get a negative sign there. Slope 
or rotation angle at point one will be positive. What I mean by positive anticlockwise direction? Same with point number two, there is an anticlockwise direction. Okay, so this one you need to do inverse matrix. You pull to the left, this side. Let's say this is your A matrix, A equal to EI divided by L3 and this whole thing. When you move to the left hand side, it will become A inverse matrix times the P minus P zero zero. Then you left out this one. V1, rotation one, rotation two. How to do the inverse matrix? Go and read your advanced mathematics textbook. Or there is a this there is a appendix in your model. Uh, upload there already since the beginning of this semester. There's a document mentioned how to do inverse matrix. So practice on the inverse matrix. Uh, you will get V1 equal to this one, rotation one equal to this one, rotation two equal to this one. Homework, uh, this is your homework. Go and practice how to do inverse matrix. Alright. After that, you get V1. Rotation one, rotation two, you substitute back here, solve for the remaining one. Okay, you substitute back here, solve for the remaining. For example, like what you see on the screen here, you substitute V1, rotation one, rotation two, like what you see here. There's a blue color filling in there. Remember to carry the positive and negative sign when you write your answer. Then you solve. So after you solve, it's a lengthy process. You get your F1Y equal to negative P. Just to prove F1Y equal to negative P. If you do not get negative P, means something wrong in your answer. Okay? Because inside here, if you refer to the diagram, there's only one external force there. Then M1 will be zero if you do the calculation. Okay? So what does it mean? You take the whole thing, 6L times this one, plus this one times this one, plus negative 6L times zero, plus 2L plus this one, plus zero times zero, plus 0 times 0. Okay, you add up all the equation, you'll get 0 for M1. Do the same. You can solve F2Y equal to 5 divided by 2. P, M2, 0. F3Y, same. You repeat the same process by following the arrow that I showed just now. You get minus 3 over 2 P, M3 equal to half P L. Okay, then you, after you, okay, before we move to the next slides, any question? Anything that no, good, huh? These slides only, only the mathematics steps, so I, I will not go into detail how to find all this value. Okay, here to here, only mathematics steps that you are solving, you're just multiplying the numbers. You're just solving the matrix over here. Then you get F1Y, M1, and so on. Next, you export what you see, what you find for uh, displacement. You look at element one. Okay, yeah, the step always is the same. Huh? You solve for the external force first. Then you go for element. So for element one, you write F equal to KD small capital, a small letter. Displacement, you need to, all these are standard. You need to refer to element dimension. Standard already, this one. And this one also same. This only need to be careful the point that you're referring to. For, 
for example, element one connecting point one and point two. Just for info in your test, I will confuse you by changing the point number. For example, I'll put four, two here. So in your answer, I will expect you to know how to write the number if this one is come out in exam. Okay, so this answer referring to diagram above. So if this one come out in exam, I give four and two for element one. I will expect answer, for example, four uh, Y. M for F two Y M two and so on. Okay, equal to K. K will be the same. However, the displacement will be different. It will be V four rotation four V two rotation rotation two. Okay, you need to refer to diagram. Okay, so remember the format of the matrix. If you look at element, if F equal to KD, K already fixed, only need to be careful on the force and the point referring to the diagram. In this case, it's very direct. You have point one and point two for element one. So you have the order, uh, order F1, Y, M1, M2, Y, M2. And this one, D is the V1, rotation 1, V2, rotation 2. Okay, you substitute the value of your displacement that you find earlier, V1, rotation 1, and also rotation 2. Inside there, you have one unknown, V2 there. So you solve for uh, the unknown. So you're solving. You manage to find what is your V1, uh, M1, F2, M2. Okay. You do the same, and then after that, you need to draw all the value that you solve for element one, F1, Y, M1, F2, M2, Y. Then, uh, Okay, because you know V2 is zero, huh? this is zero. So we managed to find the four unknown here. So you have F1Y, negative P, M0, small letter, means you are analyzing in an element dimension. So you put all the numbers inside there, you draw a free body diagram like what you see on the screen. So for element one, you have F1Y negative P, so you draw this arrow, negative P, F2Y positive going up, positive. M1 zero, so there's no moment here. M2Y negative PL, so negative means, negative means clockwise. Okay, because anti-clockwise is positive, in this case, you have a negative means is a clockwise direction with a magnitude of PL. You see the arrow? Clockwise, but there's no negative sign there. Magnitude still the same, but the direction is different. Okay. Any question on the diagram? Any question you want to ask me on the diagram? You do the same for two. Then you combine. After you, you do for one and two, you combine these two diagram to a full diagram. Okay, you do one and two, then you combine. Means combine means you need to focus on this area. For example, this one combined with this one cancel when you draw the full diagram. That's why in this diagram, you do not see moment at point two. And there's a phi over two P here because you combine this one and this one. You get five over two P in this diagram. 
same with this one. Huh? So refer back to your dynamic uh, static uh, class. You draw the shear force diagram for beam. Once you have all the forces diagram, you convert them into shear force diagram. So I will not go deep into shear force. Go back to your static and dynamic class uh, material. Go and if you forget how to draw shear force, go and ask your lecturer who teach you uh, static and dynamic class. Okay, how to draw the shear diagram for pin. Also revisit or recall how to draw bending moment diagram in static and dynamic class. Okay. So with this, I end the lecture. Let me stop the recording.